Um, a lot of people have been asking me, who do I think is a false prophet? Is, is it Donald Trump? Is it Obama? Is it the Pope? Is it uh, Kanye West, who's, all, who's running for president of the United States? Um, well, here are my thoughts. Why don't we study the Bible and we'll, we'll, we'll find out again. Um, if you guys don't know yet who is the, the first beast and second beast of Revelation 13 and what is the mark of the beast, we have a movie out called From America to Babylon. You guys can watch that on the School for Prophets website or Amazon Prime. Links are in the description box. Let's pray. Uh, Father in heaven, we thank you for another opportunity to study. We ask you, Father, to please lead us now in this study. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Matthew 7. Matthew, Matthew 7 is starting from verse 13. Let's take a look at it. Okay, here's what it says. Enter ye in at the straight gates, for wide is the gates, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets. Now this is this is Jesus Christ talking. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. So so Jesus Christ is saying, don't go into the wide gate because it's going to lead you to destruction. And then he says, beware of false prophets. It's kind of, it's almost like he's saying the false prophets are going to be the ones that lead you to the big wide gate that leads to destruction. Do you see what I'm saying? So Jesus Christ is warning us about being led to destruction. And then he says, beware of false prophets. Well, what is a prophet? First of all, a prophet is in Hebrew is Nabi. And in Greek is prophetess. Prophetess. Both mean the same thing. It means anyone who is inspired by God. The spokesperson of God. Anyone who is inspired by God and is the spokesperson of God. That is what a prophet is. So if that's what a prophet is, then what is a false prophet? Anyone who claims to be inspired by God, but really is not. That's what a false prophet is. It doesn't necessarily have, any, have, have to do with predicting the future or anything like that. But we know that, that um, God's uh, word is prophetic. It does, God does declare the future a lot of times. And so we find that prophets... When they say things, it does pertain to the future, but it doesn't necessarily mean someone who predicts the future. It means, prophet means someone who is inspired by God or is the spokesperson of God. So if that is what a prophet is, false prophet is someone who claims to be inspired by God, but really is not inspired by God and probably will prophesy too, but prophesy something different from what the God actually, what, what God actually says. We can even go to Jeremiah. We can go to Jeremiah 14. Watch this. Jeremiah 14 tells us what a false prophet is. It gives us an example, actually, of a false prophet. Of false prophets. Jeremiah 14 and verse 14. Here's what it says. Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not. Neither have I commanded them. Neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught and the deceit of their hearts. So a false prophet is a prophet that talks not from God, but from their own hearts. The deceit of their hearts. And then you, we could also go to Ezekiel um, 13. Ezekiel 13. Um, starting from verse 1, it says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy, and say, say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O Israel, thy prophets are like foxes in the desert. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the, ba in the battle of the day of the Lord. So again, these are false prophets prophesying about things that they really don't know anything about. They said they claim to be, they claim to, to, to have been inspired by God, but really they are not. And then and God even says, these are they that, that, um, that, that prophesy things and they, they don't get the people ready for the day of the Lord. But it can be hard to tell in these last days who are false prophets. Who are the false prophets in these last days? 
We don't really know. It's hard to tell unless we let the Bible tell us. How can we tell? How can we tell apart the false prophets? Again, let's go to Matthew 7. Again, let's go to Matthew 7. Watch this. Matthew 7, starting from verse 15, it says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. So they, they come to you in sheep's clothing. Who are the sheep? What is the sheep? They, they come to us in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. What does that mean? Well, let's go to John 10. Watch this. Let's go to John 10. What are we, well, we all know who the sheep sheep are. Watch this. John 10, starting from verse 14, I believe, right? Yeah. John 10, starting from verse 14, it says, this is Jesus Christ talking. He says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. So who is the good shepherd? Jesus Christ. And then he says, he knows his sheep. Who are his sheep? Good question. It says here in verse 16, And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Talking about Jesus Christ as the shepherd, and there will be one fold of sheep. One fold of sheep and one shepherd. In verse 27 he says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So the sheep of Jesus Christ are the followers of Jesus Christ. What's another word for the follower of Jesus Christ? Christian. Christian means the follower of Jesus Christ. That's what a Christian is. Christian is a sh the sheep. The sheep is Christians. So these false prophets are going to come in sheep's clothing. They're going to they're going to seem like they're Christians, but inside they are ravening wolves. What does the Bible say about about wolves? In Ezekiel 22 and verse 27 in Ezekiel 22 and verse 27 it says that the wicked are like wolves ravening the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls so wolves symbolically destroy souls so here are false prophets in in, in Matthew 7 Jesus Christ describes false prophets as ones who look like Christians but are but actually are trying to destroy souls or maybe they don't know that they're destroying souls how else can we tell? How else can we tell um, who are the false prophets? Look at this. Matthew 7, starting from verse 15 again, it says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, Christians, who look like Christians, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. They are trying to destroy you, destroy the souls. Verse 16, Ye shall know them by their fruits. What does that mean? What does it mean to know someone by their fruits? If you go to Galatians 5, Galatians 5, what is this? Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. That's the fruit of the Spirit. What are, what, are, what are these things? Character traits. So the fruits of the Spirit are these character traits. So then if we, in Matthew 7, if, if Jesus says that we shall know them by their fruits, then we shall know them by their character. What is the character of these false prophets? Well, we know, again, we know that these false prophets are going to look like Christians, but inside they are the ones who are trying to destroy your soul. How else can we tell their character traits? If we go to 1 John 4 and verse 1. It says here, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So we have to try the spirits. We have to test the spirits to see if they're actually uh, of God. We got to test them. How do we test them? How do we test them? Isaiah, no, 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 no. Isaiah 8 and verse 20. Isaiah 8. This is how we test the spirits. Isaiah 8 and verse 20, it says, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So if you, if someone is telling you things that they, they, they think that you should listen to them, but they are not going according to the word of God, what are they? False prophets. False prophets. False teachers of the word. Okay, so now watch this. Here's the confusing part. Let's go back to 1 John, 1 John 4 and verse 1. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets 
are gone out into the world. Many false prophets. But in Revelation 16, I believe. Yeah, Revelation 16 and verse 13, it says, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So out of the mouth of the false prophet. But it, it, that's in, in Revelation 16. But in, in John chapter, in 1 John 4, it says that there, there are going to be many false prophets. So what is it? Is there going to be many false prophets? Or is there going to be one false prophet? There are going to be many false prophets, but then there's going to be one main false prophet. We know that both are right here. Both are right. But we're going to we're going to tie this up in just a minute. Watch this. Again, we're going to go to Revelation 16 and verse 13. And it says, and I saw, this is John speaking, John the Revelator. He sees a vision of the future. And then he says, and I saw three unclean spirits, three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So all three, dragon, beast, and false prophet all have unclean spirits coming out of their mouth unclean like frogs coming out of their mouth now it doesn't it doesn't mean that they're, that they're actual frogs coming out of the 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 mouth of people it's unclean spirits they're unclean like frogs because cr uh, frogs are unclean animals they are unclean spirits what does that mean to come out of the mouth unclean spirits that come out of the mouth what does that mean if we go to matthew 15 watch this it's amazing what, what we can learn um, if we only read the Bible. Watch this. Matthew 15, starting from verse 17. Now, this is when Jesus Christ was talking to uh, some people and the disciples were asking them, uh, asking him questions. Um, this was about the, the eating and washing hands and things like that. Watch this. Watch what he says here. Uh, Matthew 15, starting from verse uh, 17. Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth, entereth in, in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast into the drought? But those things which proceed out of the mouth, proceed out of the mouth, come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile the man. So what comes out of the mouth? The things that proceed from the heart. And what's in the heart? So that's right there. Murders, adulteries, evil thoughts, fornications, thefts, false witness, things that are of the evil spirits, things that are sinful, unrighteous, unclean. Now, if God is in the business of inspiring us to be righteous, to be rightful thinkers, who is in the business to inspire us to be unrighteous? Who is in the business of, of inspiring people, of, of deceiving people into thinking unrighteous thoughts, unclean thoughts? That would be the devil and Satan and his, his demons. Now again, Matthew 15 Verses 17 through 20 uh, tell us that out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, unrighteousness, out of the heart. In the Old Testament, false prophets are known for this. Watch this. Ezekiel, I believe it's in Ezekiel 13. No, no, no. Let's go to Jeremiah first. Jeremiah 14. Again, we're, we're going to read this again. Jeremiah 14 and verse 14. Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught and deceit of their heart. Same exact thing in Ezekiel, Ezekiel 13. Same exact thing. Verses 1 through three, it says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy and say unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts. They prophesy out of their own hearts instead of using the word of God. They don't use the word of God as their foundation. They use their own hearts. And what does the Bible say about the heart? Jeremiah 17 and verse 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? 
Do we know pastors and preachers and teachers who prophesy and teach things from out of their own hearts and out of their own opinions and not from the Word of God? We know lots of people like that. We know lots of preachers, pastors, and quote, quote, prophets like that. Why is that even so? First Timothy 4, 1 Timothy 4, verses 1 and 2, it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with hot iron. This is the reason why some preachers and pastors and teachers and quote, quote, prophets are false prophets, false teachers. They have been seduced by doctrines of devils. So again, we know that a false prophet is, is any, anybody who claims to be a Christian, but does not go with what the, what the Word of God says. Anybody who claims to be inspired by God, but speak things that are not inspired by God. And how do we know that it's inspired by God? If, if, we, if we look at what they're saying and we compare it to Scripture, and if it's consistent with Scripture, then it is inspired by God. But if the things that they're saying are not consistent with Scripture, then guess what? They are not inspired by God. They are not so-called, quote, quote, prophets or self-proclaimed prophets. Now, this channel is called School for Prophets, but we don't call ourselves prophets. It's called School for Prophets because the School for Prophets back then, uh, if you look at 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, 1 Kings and 2 Kings, you will see that the School for Prophets or School of the Prophets or the Company of the Prophets or the Sons of the Prophets, those are the other titles of, of the name, they're basically men who study the Bible. That's why we call this channel School for Prophets. Because we are men or women who study Scripture. But if you call yourself a prophet and you prophesy and, you, and, you, and you're making quote quote um, predictions that doesn't come to pass or predictions that, that, that don't go with what the Word of God says, then you are not a prophet. You are, you are a false prophet. So a false prophet is any anybody who 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 looks like or seems like a Christian, but is actually not a Christian, and they are seduced by uh, the spirit of devil, seduced by false doctrines, and are le leading many to their destruction. That is a false prophet. So next question: What is it then? Are there many false prophets, or is there one false prophet? Yes to both. Now. For those of you guys who have not yet watched the movie From America to Babylon, we greatly encourage you guys to watch the movie From America to Babylon or From Babylon to America. Links are in the description box. You guys can watch it at the schoolforprofits.tv, the website, or Amazon Prime. Links are in the description box. We give you guys a a point by point study on who is the beast, who is the second beast, and who and what is the mark of the beast of Revelation 13. And these are backdrops that you guys need to know in order to study this particular subject, the false prophet. Now, we know, for those of you guys who have seen the movie, we know that the first beast of Revelation 13 is the papacy and the second beast of Revelation 13 is America. But more specifically, apostate Protestant America. Let's go to Revelation 13. Watch this. Let's go to Revelation 13. We're going to start from verse 11. It says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb now remember a horn in the bible is a symbol for power that's habakkuk 3 and verse 4 symbol for power or strength pillars of strength so this lamb-like beast the second beast which is america has two horns two pillars of strength what are those two pillars of strength for those of you guys who watched the movie we know that the two pillars of strength is the state side and the church side state and church church and state and the separation thereof that are the, these are the two pillars of strength of america okay and then it says and he spake as a dragon and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. 
saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. So, so what did the second beast do? He wrought miracles in the sight of men and in the sight of the beast in order to deceive people so that they can make an image to the beast. And if you keep reading, it says that the second beast causes men to have a, the mark of the beast. Okay, so the second beast, America, wrought miracles in the sight of men and in the sight of the beast and deceived people to accept the mark of the beast. Now let's go to let's go to Revelation 19. I believe it's in Revelation 19. Watch this. Revelation 19 and verse 20, talking about the false prophet. Now remember, the second beast, which is America, was the one that wrought miracles in front of men and the beast. And he deceived people in order for them to accept the mark of the beast. Now watch this. The false, talking about the false prophet, Revelation 19 and verse 20, it says, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. So who is, who is this talking about? The false prophet. The false prophet, it says in, in, in Revelation 19 and verse 20, is the one that deceived people into receiving the mark of the beast. And he is also the one that wrought miracles in front of the beast. But wait a minute. In Revelation 16, it says that the second beast was the one that wrought miracles and deceived people into accepting the mark of the beast. So then that means the false prophets and the second beast are one and the same. So then the United States of America is also the false prophet, but more specifically, it is the church side of America. How do we know? Who wrought miracles? Who's going to supernaturally wrought miracles? Would it be the political side of America or the church side? Who is the side that has anything to do with anything supernatural? The church side, not the political side. The church side. It is the church side that causes miracles, not the political side. So then this is more so the church side of America, apostate Protestant America, that is the false prophet. Apostate Protestant America, that is the false prophet. So yes, it is true. There are many false prophets because there are many false teachers within apostate Protestant America. There are many false teachers, false prophets within the apostate churches of America. Many. But they are all as a whole one body. That's why as a whole they are the false prophet being talked about in Revelation. Apostate Protestants of America. Okay? Now check this out. Tim uh, 2 Timothy 4 starting from verse 2. 2 Timothy 4, starting from verse 2. Watch this. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers or prophets having itching ears and they shall turn their ears from the truth and they shall be turned unto fables fables meaning fictitious tales or false teaching but what does it say they shall turn their ear away from the truth what is truth psalms 118 verse 142 says thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness thy law is truth and verse 151 says thou art near o lord thy commandments are truth and what does it say in 2 Timothy 4 and verse 4? It says, talking about those who are seeking after false teachers and false prophets, it says, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. They will turn away their ears from the law, from the commandments of God. That is so true with a lot of the Protestants today. There's only one Protestant denomination that is keeping, that is upholding the truth, that is upholding the Ten Commandments of God. There's only, there's only one denomination. And there's only one denomination that is truly upholding the Ten Commandments of God. All other denominations, and I'm sorry to say this, to, to, I'm sorry to say this because a lot of you guys are from other denominations, but I'm sorry to say 
but a lot of the other denominations are doing exactly this. First Timothy, uh, Second Timothy 4 and verse 4. They shall turn away their ears from the truth, from keeping the commandments of God. Now, a lot of us have no problem with nine commandments. It is the fourth commandment that, that a lot of people have a problem with. The Sabbath commandment. The Sabbath commandment. A lot of apostate Protestants are saying, we don't have to keep the commandments anymore. We don't need to keep the Sabbath anymore. But if we do keep the Sabbath, let's keep it on the wrong day. That's what they say. We don't have to keep the Sabbath anymore, but if we do keep the Sabbath, let's keep it on every day except for the right day. Guess what system you are in, if that's the case. If that's the case for you, guess what system you are in. You are in the false prophet system. I'm telling you this as a warning. There is going to come a time where probation will be closed. That's it for you. Ezekiel 13, let's bring this so close. Ezekiel 13, by the way, by the way. Is Trump part of the, the, the false prophet system? Is he keeping the Sabbath? No. Is he teaching people to keep the Sabbath? No. What is he teaching though? What about, what about Kanye West? What is he teaching? False worship. Sunday worship. Sunday worship. That's false worship. He's not teaching people to keep the Sabbath. I mean, the rest of the Ten Commandments, it's obvious, right? It's obvious you shouldn't kill. You shouldn't cheat on your wife. You shouldn't have any other gods. That's obvious. But... The Sabbath commandment, for some reason, people have a problem with that. Again, they say, we don't have to keep the Sabbath anymore, but if we do keep the Sabbath, let's keep it on the wrong day. Sunday, not, not Sabbath. Sunday. We don't have to keep the Sabbath anymore, but if we do keep the Sabbath, let's keep it on every other day except for the right day. Ezekiel 13. Watch this, man. Let's read this. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, uh, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy and say unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts hear ye the word of the Lord thus saith the Lord God woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirits and have seen nothing O Israel thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert ye have not gone up into the gaps neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. That's what true prophets are supposed to be doing. We are supposed to be preparing people for the day of the Lord, for the second coming of Jesus Christ. We should be preparing uh, people for a battle. There is a, there is a coming crisis that a lot of us are not prepared for. Watch this, verse 6. They have seen vanity and lying divinations, saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord hath not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Have ye not seen a vain vision? And have ye not spoken a lying divination? Whereas ye say, The Lord saith, albeit I have not spoken. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore, behold, I am against you, saith the Lord God. And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies, they shall not be in the assembly of my people. Neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel, neither shall they enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord God, because, even because, they have seduced my people, saying, peace, and there is no peace. That reminds me of something. They say, they're saying peace, and there is no peace. And one built up a wall, and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. You know what untemper untempered mortar is? Mortar is what you use to stick stick brick together like glue so they so that they are tight so that they don't fall the bricks if you're making a wall you make the wall with bricks and you put tempered mortar on it so that it doesn't fall untempered mortar is mortar that doesn't have the proper consistency it's weak so what god is saying here is those false prophets are laying up bricks that are weak with weak mortar it's going to fall, God says. It's going to fall. Say unto them which dub it with untempered mortar that it shall 
fall, he says. That's in verse 11. There shall be an overflowing shower, and ye, O great hailstones, shall fall, and a stormy wind shall rend it. Does this remind you of something? Does this remind you of anything? Here in Ezekiel 13, the false prophets are saying peace and safety, but then there, there was sudden what? Sudden destruction. Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30, starting from verse 9. Watch this, man. This is... Isaiah 30, watch this. This is a rebellious people. Talking about Israel. Back then when they had lots of false prophets. It says, this is a rebellious people, lying children. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Do you see? You see a parallel? Are there, are there people, are there professed Christians today? Professed people of God that claim to be people of God. But don't adhere to the law of God. Apostate Protestant America. What's this? This is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, righteousness, right doing. Don't prophesy righteousness unto us, or right doing, or commandment keeping unto us. What do they, what do they want? What do they, what do these um, people want prophesy not unto us right things speak unto us smooth things prophesy deceits get you out of the way turn aside out of the path cause the holy one of israel to cease from before us wherefore thus saith the holy one of israel because ye despise the word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to Fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. Sudden destruction. Anybody who is in this system of, uh, of false prophets, the false prophet system, sudden destruction is their end. Sudden destruction. 2 Peter 2, starting from verse 1, it says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even deny the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. So back then, during Peter's time, there was also a swift destruction following false prophets, and those people who followed false prophets. And false teachers. Will that, will that same thing happen to us? 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 2 and 3. 1 Thessalonians 5 starting from verse 1 I mean. Watch this. But of the times of the seasons brethren ye have no need that are right unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord... This is talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ, the day of the Lord. So cometh as a thief in the night, for when they shall say, peace and safety. Remember what they were saying back then? Peace and safety. Nothing is going to happen. Preach unto us smooth things. Tickle our ears. We don't want to know about righteousness. We don't want to know about the coming crisis. Preach unto us smooth things. Peace and safety. Watch this. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. They shall not escape. Who was the one preaching unto them peace and safety? Who? Apostate Protestant America. Those who are not preaching that there's going to be a coming crisis. Those who are not preaching that there's going to be a coming Sunday law. That if you keep the Sunday law, you are subject to the wrath of God. They're saying, no, there, there is no such thing as a Sunday law. We don't need to worry about a Sunday law. You know what we need to worry about? Microchips. That's what we need to worry about. Not a Sunday law. There's not going to be a coming crisis for the people of God because we're going to be raptured up, quote, quote, before that time comes. That's not true. That's a futurist point of view. That is not biblical. That is nowhere to be found in the Bible. I have a couple videos on that. Links are in the description box. If you want to know, watch this. 
It's so simple. We're going to go to Matthew 24. So we're going to do Matthew 24. Matthew 24, then we're going to flip over to 1 Thessalonians 4. Matthew 24, starting from verse 1, uh, verse 21, it says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, to this time no nor ever shall be. So there's going to be a great tribulation. But then it says, skip on over to verse 29, it says, Immediately after the tribulation, after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory so there's going to be a great tribulation and then after the tribulation the son of man descends that's jesus christ Jesus Christ descends after the Great Tribulation. And then flip on over to 1 Thessalonians 4, starting from verse 16. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them in the air. So, there's a Great Tribulation. And then after the Great Tribulation, Jesus Christ comes. Jesus Christ comes to resurrect the dead in Christ and then we which are alive and remain will be raptured up. So then the rapture is after the tribulation, not before. It's after the tribulation, not before. Are there people saying, it's okay. It's all about peace and safety. There is no such thing as a coming Sunday law. If there is a coming crisis, we will not go through it. Even though Acts 14 and verse 22 says that it is through much tribulation that we will enter into the kingdom of God. Do you see? These are the apostate Protestant churches of America that teach these things, saying peace and safety. We don't need to worry about the coming crisis. We don't need to be prepared about the coming crisis. So who is the false prophet? The apostate Protestant churches of America. Yes, Kanye West is part of that. Yes, Trump is part of that. Any Christian or Christian leader who's telling people that we don't need to keep the Sabbath, part of that we don't have to keep the sabbath but if we do keep the sabbath let's keep it on the wrong day they have turned their ears away from the law of god false prophet any christian or christian leader that are saying we don't need to prepare for the coming crisis we don't need to prepare for the coming sunday law guess what if you, don't, if you are not prepared for a coming sunday law if you are not prepared for the crisis guess what sudden destruction come upon you. Remember what Jesus Christ says in Matthew 7? Ravening wolves. These false prophets are people who seem to be Christians but are actually ravening wolves. They are trying to destroy souls. And those who are not prepared will be destroyed. Those who are not prepared for the coming crisis will be destroyed. Peace and safety. Then sudden destruction will come upon them. Praise God always. See you guys next time.